he's in a chum bucket under the sea. Wait, does he live in a chum bucket or does he just work there? I'm gonna look that up. Greetings, people of the internet. I'm Scott with Cirqueworks Art Labs. Welcome to the Underground Laboratory, where from time to time we pay tribute to the mad scientists, supervillains, and evil geniuses that help inspire us to achieve greatness. And today we are inducting our smallest member ever, very tiny, but that's not going to stop him because he has big goals, not just to take over the world. He has a, a different kind of goal, and that is to obtain a secret recipe. I think you know who we're talking about. We are talking about Plankton from SpongeBob SquarePants. And we're going to talk about him, and we're going to commission a sketch, and we are going to post it on the Mad Genius Wall of Fame. So, let's get to it. It's been a little while since I've done an episode of Mad Genius Hall of Fame, but Steven Hillenberg, who's the creator of SpongeBob, recently passed away, and he created one of my all-time favorite evil genius characters in Plankton. So I thought, you know, bring back the show, um, pay tribute to Plankton as an evil genius, and also pay sort of pay tribute to Steven Hillenberg and, and talk about SpongeBob SquarePants and kind of the effect that it had on me, um, the influence that it had on me. Um, so yeah, so here we go. So uh, as usual, we're going to start off, we're just going to talk a little bit about the tools while I'm drawing this character. Uh, I am using a Prismacolor Color Race pencil. It's red. I can, you can use whatever color you want. I, I tend to like the red on this uh, kind of earth tone paper. And the paper I'm using is uh, it's Kona Classic. Uh, and the classic means tan, so there's different Kona brands, but if it's Kona Classic, it's sort of this tan colored. Um, what's interesting about this paper, it's, it's made from recycled coffee bean bag fiber. Um, so that's kind of interesting, but it, but it is really a nice paper, and I like I like how the markers uh, work along with it. That it, the colors kind of are a little off. You have to play around because you're you're not dealing with just a white paper. But I, I really do like the effect that it has. So let's get into the character of Plankton. Plankton first appeared in season one of SpongeBob episode 3B in the episode titled Plankton. Um, it was it was totally his episode and when he was introduced I mean it was it kind of it kind of revolutionized the show. I mean it was early on in the show but but before that I mean in some ways uh, Mr. Krabs is sort of kind of sort of the antagonist and antagonist of SpongeBob but not so much, but Plankton was the introduction of the real, like the kind of the major, you know, the major bad guy. Um, so ironically, Plankton was born on November 30th, 1942, which is also the birthday of Mr. Krabs, who is his arch nemesis, his rival. And if you watch any of the shows, you know that Plankton's main goal on the show isn't so much world domination or anything like that like a lot of other supervillains or evil geniuses his goal is to just obtain the secret formula for Krabby Patties which is under lock and key by Mr. Krabs. Now he and Mr. Krabs kind of grew up together and they were friends for a while but uh, there was a falling out and uh, and Plankton tried to get the the secret formula for cra crab patties, but all he got was a little end of it that said, I think it was like, um, add a pinch of chum. So that's where he came up with the idea of chum bucket because that was the only ingredients he knew about the Krabby Patties. So he created the chum bucket, and this was sort of his way of competing with Mr. Krabs, but as anyone who watches the show knows, uh, the chum bucket is not much competition. I don't think he's had a single customer. Um, probably because he doesn't spend a lot of time like making food or anything like that. It's all just trying to to steal the formula for Krabby Patties. So, so like I said, he has uh, his his arch nemesis is Mr. Krabs. But because of that, it's almost it, it's almost like he's the he's the main villain for SpongeBob himself. And you know, SpongeBob is kind of this easy-go-lucky kind of guy, so you wouldn't think he would have an arch nemesis, which in some ways he does, in some ways he does, but because he's such a loyal employee of the Krusty Krab, 
um, that he is obviously trying to protect that secret formula along with, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and, and keep it from Plankton. So they are definitely rivals and he's kind of the main bad guy. And one thing that I really like about him being the main bad guy is he's just this microscopic little guy. And when he first appeared uh, in the show, you could only see him like under a microscope, like they would hold up a microscope. And then I think as the show got on, that was kind of harder to do and kind of harder to have that interaction. So they made him a little bit bigger, but he still kind of fits in the palm of your hand. But I love the idea of this sort of eat super villain with this, you know, kind of Napoleon complex times like a billion um, that is just bent on, again, not necessarily taking over the world or Bikini Bottom, but um, just getting that, getting, getting that secret formula and just becoming a success. I just love the idea and I love the character. Now, as an evil genius, Plankton pretty much works alone except for, I mean, he doesn't really necessarily have a sidekick like a lot of mad scientists do, but he does have his computer wife, Karen, who he built, um, but she's kind of less of a sidekick because she's the one that actually comes up with a lot of the plans for Plankton to, you know, to, to obtain the, the secret formula for Krabby Patties. And as you can kind of see in the background here, that little TV monitor, that is Karen, that's his computer wife, and they kind of have this tumultuous relationship. So sometimes they get along and everything, and sometimes not so much. But, but she's always there trying to, you know, and she's programmed to kind of help help create these these dastardly plans to, to get the secret formula for Krabby Patties. Plankton is the is the main bad guy in SpongeBob SquarePants, but there have been a few episodes where he's kind of portrayed more as the sympathetic anti-hero. Um, and th those are good episodes too. It's like kind of his plight and you kind of feel sorry for him in, in some ways that he can't. Because when you think about it, uh, Mr. Krabs isn't that nice of a guy <laughs> all the time. So, so sometimes you do kind of feel, feel a little more sympathy towards Plankton. And it's kind of one of those things where he's just always foiled at every turn. So um, <laughs> you got to kind of feel sorry for him a little bit. Plankton is voiced by Mr. Lawrence, whose real name is Douglas Lawrence Asowski, but he goes by Mr. Lawrence on, on the credits and everything. And uh, Mr. Lawrence is a writer and storyboard artist on SpongeBob, and he does a few voices. He does a lot of, he does, in addition to Plankton, he also does Larry the Lobster, and then he does a lot of like ancillary characters, characters that kind of just kind of pop up and sort of background roles and everything like that. But it's, it's always kind of fun to, to listen for those other characters. As I mentioned, Plankton was created by Stephen Hellenberg, who was a marine biologist and an artist, and he created the SpongeBob characters, at least the beginning, what became the SpongeBob characters, as educational comic books to kind of teach people about marine biology. Obviously, he had a big fascination with that. And then he went on to work for Nickelodeon, um, and he worked on Rocco's Modern Life, and while he was doing that, he continued to develop the idea of SpongeBob SquarePants pants, which at the time he was called Sponge Boy, and the, I think the original name for the show was Sponge Boy Ahoy, and then it became, you know, things changed and it became SpongeBob SquarePants, and, uh, and I mean, it just came, became this worldwide phenomenon, and that's kind of what I, you know, what I want to talk about, because um, most people, I mean, most people are affected by SpongeBob one way or another, um, myself included. Um, I had... I had been in sort of the children's entertainment business. I had developed a, a kid's show and everything. And Sponge, so SpongeBob came after that whole part of my life. So there was a time where I would just devour kind of any kind of um, children's entertainment to just see what was out there and everything. So after I kind of moved on from that, um, uh, SpongeBob started to become, it, you know, you started to hear about SpongeBob. It wasn't totally popular when I, you know, because it took a little, seemed like it took a little while for it to pick up, but pe some, certain people knew about it and they were just talking about how great it was and how funny. And at first I just kind of looked at it and I'm like, because when you think of the name SpongeBob SquarePants, I'm like, what is this? This just sounds ridiculous. And I kind of stayed away from it for a while. And then it just come, kept coming back to me like, oh, you got to watch this show. It's great and everything. And to me, just from an outsider's view, it, it looked like it might have been sort of a uh, sort of derivative of like Ren and Stimpy, so I wasn't really sure, but finally, you know, some some friends whose daughter watched it and everything, they said, you know, just, you know, you should watch it, it's great, you see, I mean, I love it and I'm an adult. 
So, so I watched it and I was like totally hooked. I mean, just the humor, um, just it was, it was so irreverent, but the character of SpongeBob is just, he was just so, you know, genuine and positive and just this lovable guy. We should all go through life like SpongeBob because he, he's just, he really is such a positive character and everything. But besides that, just the humor in general, the music, the songs, it's just the whole show is just, I mean, I don't see how anyone could just watch this and not crack up. And it was, it, so I, I kind of became an advocate for the show too. And I, you know, because my dad was a lot older than me. I mean, he doesn't like watch a lot of cartoons, but but I kept trying to get him into it. Like, I know it sounds stupid, Dad, but you gotta gotta watch it. It's it's really hilarious. But but SpongeBob was one of that show, one of those shows where when my kids were little. Um, we, it's just something we could all watch together because it, it appeals to such a broad range of, of people, all the characters and everything. And and we had this little one of those little DVD video things that you would put on the back of your car seats, and then we go on road trips and stuff. And that was one of the few ones where I didn't care if my kids wore headphones because I, I didn't mind them listening to it in the back because it was just funny and everything. Especially and then when the songs come on, you could sing the songs and stuff like that. Not that there were a lot of songs, but the ones that they had were really good. But it's just overall, it was just just a great show, and that's why you know that's it's a testament to why it's it stood the test of time, and. You know, Stephen Hellberg worked on the show, he created the show, and then he kind of left it for a while, I think, after the first movie. Um, then at the second movie, I think he came back. But he was, and he worked on it until, basically until his death, which, you know, he had ALS, so, I mean, his health was deteriorating, but he, he kept working on the show. And I was talking to Vincent DePorter, who, um, who, lives, who lives in the area I do, he's also an artist, he works... He works on this, or he did work on the SpongeBob SquarePants, and he kind of told me that uh, you know about uh, you know that Stephen Helmberg was diagnosed with ALS, and you know I was really sad, and it seemed, and it also seemed like he went really, it went really quick, which you know obviously is the disease, but um, but he was, and he was the one doing all the, you know, the he was put, he was the one publishing the, you know, the SpongeBob SquarePants comic books. And, you know, I guess he had told Vincent that, that he would continue to do that for as long as he could, and it seemed like he kind of did. But it's kind of sad that now, because he was sort of that driving force behind the comics, that um, they've kind of wrapped up production. But I would, I would hope somebody brings back those comics and, and definitely gets, you know, Vincent and some of these other artists that worked on it um, some work doing SpongeBob, because the, the characters are great, and they translate so well to comics. And um, it's... You know, it's 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 just really sad because he went. He was pretty young. I think he might have been like 57 or something. Stephen Hillenburg when he passed away just recently. Um, so, but he and you know, off the hills of Stanley, who also was a huge influence on me. But you know, Stanley lived quite a long, you know, and productive life. Where um, you know, unfortunately, Stephen Hillenburg died way too young. Um, and uh, you know, and, and SpongeBob was his thing. You know, I don't know that he created a lot of other things, but I, I really admire that where you create this one thing, you love it so much. And I don't know what the whole situation was where he left and came back, because um, I know I I don't know if Nickelodeon owned the rights to begin with, or what that whole thing was, or what the situation was. But um, but it was nice that he came back and everything, and he just I. I just really, I think a lot of people owe him a lot because it's it's just such a great character and very different from, I can't really think of a lot of characters you could compare Spongebob to. He's totally original, a lot of the other characters involved were totally original, so funny um, and it's it's sort of a shame that, that um, you know, unfortunately he had to leave us so soon. Um, but he did leave just this amazing thing for us, and and Plankton was one of those characters, and that's why you know I want to kind of bring this series back and, and talk about Plankton and and kind of because he's he's just this great you know evil genius character. The fact that he's so small and everything and and everything and 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 he's not you know he's he's an evil guy, but he but like I said, he can be sympathetic and he's funny and just the way. He, he talks and everything is just he's just it really is a great character and a lot of people 
just, you know, myself included, just love them. But anyway, so we're wrapping up the, the illustration here. Uh, I am kind of filling in the white because like I was mentioned before, this is a, this is a, a neutral um, tone paper, so you can't really do white and there aren't really white markers. So I do that with just a regular, another, uh, like a Prismacolor pencil. And then I like to go over it. And, and for, the, uh, for the colors, I always use, I just use whatever markers I have. So a lot of Copics, um, but whatever markers, you know, I'm not really loyal to any particular marker. So I'll use whatever kind of alcohol-based markers I can. And then I like to go over the whole picture with sort of this, uh, this uh, Signo gel pen, and it just kind of makes everything just pop. And um, so, yeah, I'm really happy with the way he came out. He's, you know, very, you know, very simple character, but he's, he's just a great character design. So it's kind of fun to do sort of my own take on that. And of course, just throw Carrie and his computer wife in there for, for kicks. And uh, yeah, um, this was a fun one. And it's, it's nice to kind of go back to this series of, you know, Mad Genius Hall of Fame, and uh, and hopefully I'll have more to come. These ones take a little longer because there's a little bit of research involved and everything, but I do like doing them. So if you like them, let me know. Let me know in the comments section what you think about these, if you want me to continue these, or if you have any other ideas for, for Mad Genius characters you'd like to induct into the Mad Genius Hall of Fame. It's that time again where we publicly unveil our portrait of Plankton, and he is going up in the Mad Genius Hall of Fame. So, if you guys have somebody you'd like to induct into the Hall of Fame, let us know. Leave a question, not a question, leave a comment in the comment section. And who knows, maybe your favorite supervillain, evil genius, or mad scientist will be the next we induct into the Hall of Fame. We'll see you later. That is all. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Also, you can follow me at Silkworks on social media. Do you like making comics? Then go to Silkworks.com and pick up the Comic Maker Starter Kit. It's packed full of fonts, brushes, templates, and more. And best of all, it's totally free.